here. Can Julian Wilson do exactly the same thing? Speaking of Julian Wilson and Felipe Toledo, we're about to get underway with the Quicksilver Pro Final. We'll have a brand new champ this season. The yellow jerseys changing hands on both the women and the men's side. And now Toledo trying to call on the gods right now because he's in his first ever championship tour final experience. Julian's have a couple more finals in him pots. Yep. Who do you expect to win this heat? Well, it's, it's anyone's game. You know, uh, both guys have been surfing really well. It just depends whether Felipe's got left in the tank. I mean, he's been lighting it up a little bit more than Julian has throughout the rounds. Julian's kind of been cruising through. We saw a little bit of the air game in the semifinals. He's going to have to continue that because Felipe, he's going to go to the air. It's going to be a great battle. Thanks for being with us here watching the Roxy and Quicksilver Pro as we're about to start the final. Joe Chappelle alongside one of the most successful surfers of all time, Martin Potter. We think about world titles. So you won one in 89. Felipe is already talking about a world title before his first event win. Well, it's a good start. I mean, you've got to have high hopes. You've got to have those big goals. You've got to drive and strive to be the best in the world. These guys aren't out here just to make up the numbers. They want to end up being that world champion. And, you know, you've got to have that, visualize it. You've got to, you know, drive towards it. You know, you've got to have these goals. And, uh, and Philippe Toledo, tell you what, if he keeps surfing the way he does right, or he is right now, um, he's going to find himself thereabouts or, or very close. Well, we have a handful of grommets standing tall on Freddy's Rock, as it's been deemed uh, over the last couple of days, as we just sounded the horn for a 35-minute final with Julian versus Felipe Wilson from the Sunshine Coast, at Australian represented basically on his home court. He comes down here when it's firing all the time. He makes a lot of comparisons to Noosa being a sand bottom right-hand point. He says it gets a lot bigger and better down here. So more often than not, he's down here trying to get big barrels. And one thing he's been showing us on finals day are gigantic aerial maneuvers to earn this spot. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, we always knew he had more left in the tank and he uh, he didn't show much of his uh, A game up until that semi-final. He pulled it out and uh, I'll tell you what he needed to though because uh, Miguel Pupo was making him work for that. Now we'll see a little whitewater ball run through. No one interested in that small insider. Toledo wearing the blue jersey. Uh, came off his rookie year on tour, finishing 15th in the world. He was in that rookie class with guys like Nat Young, which was, he had the stranglehold moving into the top 10. We saw big moments from Toledo, and he was able to earn perfect 10s at certain venues like in Brazil, in a dream session at a high tide Rincon over at Bells Beach. But he wasn't showing signs that he'd be winning events that season. No, you know, and it's, it takes a, a little while to get used to it. You know, same thing with Miguel Pupo. He's... Had a few years on tour, you know, posting one of his best results here on the Gold Coast as well. So taking these kids a little bit of time to, to get used to this uh, big stage. Uh, obviously, Medina's win last year, the world title going to Brazil, it's given the Brazilians a hell of a lot of confidence. You know, they're all starting to believe they can do it. And uh, they are surfing exactly that way. Three Brazilians in the semifinals alongside one Australian, i.e. Julian Wilson. So we always knew there was going to be one Brazilian in the final. Um, I tell you what, it, it, it could have been two. Exactly. We had uh, so many Brazilians in the draw coming into the final series. It's kind of a scenario that Julian Wilson is really used to. He's had four final experiences on the championship tour. Three of them have been with Brazilians. You think about Gabriel Medina back in France when he was a rookie. He finished runner-up in that matchup. He got Medina again in Portugal, was able to beat him there. Medina matched up again at Pipeline, and now Felipe <laughs> being the fourth as he's entering his fifth final of all time, and he th his only other final was against Taj Burrow at Lower Trestles. Yeah, well, that's a sign of things to come. We're going to see Julian and Medina obviously battle in the years to come. Julian only 26 years of age, ranked number 14 in the world, and that was due to that World uh, uh, Pipeline Masters towards the end of uh, last year's tour. He had a pretty semi-year on uh, Julian's standards that uh, Pipe Masters pulled him out of that doldrums and uh, got him back on track. And I'll tell you what, he's kept that momentum going, he's kept that ball rolling, and we're seeing you know, shades of what Julian Wilson can do. Well, it's really true for both of these surfers' pots. When you look at their rankings from last season, Toledo wasn't putting up big numbers on the championship tour level. He slid down to 17th from his rookie year performance at 15th. Wilson's last season was the first year he's ever finished outside of the top 10. The former Rookie of the Year even had to go down to prime events, we called him last year, to back himself up. And the whole role started for him in Holly Eva when he finished runner-up to Dusty Payne. Yeah, it's a tough tour. Um, you know, you've got to be in the top 22 in the men's and the top 10 in the QS. So there's not much room to move. There's not a lot of time and a lot of opportunities to, to you know, 
make mistakes. You've got to be on your game. Quarterfinals are better if you want to qualify through the main stage. And uh, you know, I think Julian Wilson's found that form again, and I think he's going to. Uh, I think he's going to be a tough one to beat this year. Well, Potts, we just lost four minutes quickly off of this big final. There's so much anticipation on the beach for the opening strike. Take us into the competitor's mind right now. Felipe and Julian are sitting right next to each other. They're not saying a word, but now Felipe is matching Julian, deciding to paddle up the point a bit. <clears throat> Felipe trying to hold that inside position. He wants to get the first good wave. No priority at the moment, so these guys will jockey for position. We see Julian giving way to Toledo's positioning, and now this is the first wave of the final. Felipe goes off the bottom, layback, hammer in the pocket to start. Driving through a nice round cut back into the pocket. Floats over the next section with ease. Now Toledo looking for the finish. A high line wrap just to clean it up on the inside corner. Toledo always with more. Goes to the air for the reverse. He'll try to pull that one off and he'll be able to ride out with control. <laughs> Viva Brazil. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh... Brazilians are fired up here this afternoon. Rainbow de Janeiro, I think they're going to have to rename this place, Joe. <laughs> How'd you like this decision to take this first wave, Bot? Well, you know, getting the ball rolling, obviously four minutes ticked away. This turn, I love that right there where he gives it that extra little bit of tweak, letting those fins slide. Look how light he is on his feet. Look how much speed he gathers when that wave gets flat. He's got the ability to, to, to generate his own speed and then finishes off dynamically, which you're going to have to do here in the finals. It's all about stomping those last turns, but look at this turn right here. Tail out of the back of the wave, puts the pressure on the front foot, and just throws buckets of water into the sky, straight into that next turn. That's where we talk about that uh, transition between maneuvers, a double pump off the bottom. Watch this turn right here as he gouges that inside rail, and then right at the end there gives it that last little push, releasing the power off the back foot, putting the pressure on the front, which creates that drift on the tail. Philippe Toledo, one of the best at it. I'll tell you what, he does that perfectly. And now on the back of the jet ski, he'll be dropped off at the top of the rocks. They've been timing these little drop-offs about 40 seconds. Sometimes it can be a little longer if it takes some time to get off the back of the sled. But Toledo is going to be happy that Julian Wilson hasn't done anything since he got that opener. Judge is still thinking about setting the scale in this final clash. Toledo and Wilson trying to clinch this title here at the Quicksilver Pro for the first time in their career, Potts. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it's, uh, we're going to have one of these kids wearing the, the yellow jersey going into Bells Beach. That's going to be a, an amazing feeling for, for either Julian or Felipe. And, um, you know, Felipe obviously being very vocal about the fact that he wants to uh, win a world title this year. He's feeling pretty good about things. And now a very interesting situation where instead of paddling down the point, he's opted to wait for a set. There's been a couple of sneaky ones off the end there, but uh, we'll have to wait and see what he does. If he does, I mean, he got a good one uh, up against Adriano de Souza, didn't he? And, and tagged it a bunch of times and posted a good score. And that's kind of what got his momentum going. When you think about a contest, spots, you always talk about the guys that have been throwing down the biggest numbers and the most exciting surfing. And it's not every event that those guys end up keeping that consistency into a final. The Quicksilver Pro this season, it feels like we do have the two guys that have been putting together the best composure and heats, showing us big airs, big turns, this youth brigade, it's, it's going to be a well-worthy champion once this horn finishes. <laughs> Absolutely right. Both guys have been uh, on form, cons consistently posting high scores, big two-wave totals. And as uh, I think, uh, I, mean, I think it was Ronnie, Ronnie Blake, he said that uh, Julian hasn't dropped a heat this whole event. You know, those three-man heats in round one and round three, uh, round four, sorry, he's uh, won both those heats. So. The only guy that's gone through this entire event without dropping a heat, so that's a, a testament on how good he's been surfing. Well, huge numbers from Julian Wilson, even a near perfect 977. Here comes Toledo from the rocks, always generating speed on small sections. He has some white water to work with. This is just a real little wave to move him down the line a bit. Won't be a keeper in this final, but his opening score is in now from the panel. Starts off with an excellent range number at an 8.0. Great way to start, and that's what he's been doing. He's been putting the pressure on his opponent straight away. Julian Wilson, though, he's the kind of kid that's got that ability to answer back. You know, it's kind of a daunting situation where, you know, you're sitting there waiting for your first wave and you hear a big score getting dropped and you, you, you sort of think to yourself, geez, how am I going to manufacture a score like that? 
Whereas Julian Wilson's got that confidence and that ability to be able to say to himself, you know what, it's only an eight. I can do that in my sleep. A nice easy pace for Wilson, letting 10 minutes drift off the clock without a score. He let Felipe Toledo manage the start. He stayed deep and he turned in a big number for it, 8.0. Why wouldn't Wilson try to battle him for that position, Pots? Well, it's everyone's got their own way of competing, and I think Julian... He doesn't want to get in that, uh, that battle, that uh, hassle. It kind of puts you in a different mindset. Things have been going good for him, so he's going to stick with that. Under priority again, Toledo will try to turn in a solid backup score. Nice rhythm, big throw tail, reverse attempt. That one he lets go of. We saw him pull a massive one just the other day. Yeah, we've seen him do some crazy stuff, haven't we? I mean, uh, his heats have been highlight reels, video parts that most guys around the world would be honored to have and he's done it in a heat he's done it with a jersey he's done it under pressure and he's done it against some crazy competitors well we had four-time world champ mark richards on hand he's actually downstairs watching this final one thing he talked about the old days was the format was really catered to safe surfing counting turns length of ride people started getting strategies to play it safe back then and he was loving how everything changed to be radical so guys can use their video part element for approach in a 30 or 35 minute heat to do big airs and push the limits of pro surfing. Toledo makes a late decision to grab this wave. Sets it up off the bottom, front side carved to start. Low road wrap and it might double up for him. Toledo now into an inside section, layback, dagger. He'll pull that one out and he has a little room for more. Toledo jams it out in front. One more on the inside section. He's making his intent clear that he wants to be number one in the world. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, that, uh, that was a great little wave there underneath priority of Julian Wilson. F -f Smart surfing from Philippe Toledo, realizing there's not a lot of waves coming through right now. This was a very tricky wave to surf. There's a little bit of a chop going through it, so Philippe had to be very careful not to catch a rail and make sure that his surfing was nice and clean. Look at that turn right there. We talk about that layback snap. It can be done on any section of the wave. Philippe Toledo does. He's showed us some variety right there. He showed us a couple of different styles of that layback snap, that one the other day where he threw the board right away from him. This one, the board right under his feet. Let's have a look at the turn as he brings it through the inside. This is next shot right here. Just, yeah, just throws those fins out. That was an amazing maneuver. Great agility, great ability there from Felipe Toledo. Impressive finish as we'll take another angle. The layback is one of your favorite spots. This one with the new skull flare, yep. nose pick, blow tail. And he sits on it on a tight section. He's able to go for high risk maneuvers and have complete control. Turns in a 6.0. Still, Wilson scoreless, 23 minutes remaining. Well, Julian needing 14 points right now. That's a couple of sevens. He's back in the heat. You know, we saw Steph Gilmore get comboed in the Roxy Pro final with an eight and a seven, you know, a mid range seven. Julian's got to get busy. He's got to start, you know, okay. He's still got plenty of time, 22 minutes and 45 seconds to go. It's not how many waves you catch, it's the, the quality of waves you catch. You need two good scoring rides. So at the moment, Julian doesn't really need to be too worried. A couple of sevens, as I said, he's back in the game. So Felipe, with a dream experience in this first stop on tour, making his first final. He told us early that he wants to be world champ this season. Last year is interesting because he really didn't have a major win when he went on to qualify for the tour. His first win was last season at the U.S. Open, and he also took a win in Brazil, found the winning feeling, and he got a lot more confidence from that. We have Pete Mel, a former big wave world champ in the lineup, well familiar with driving skis, and he sees the water patrol blazing by him. Pete, you've been in some heavy conditions at driving the ski. Uh, how talented are these guys that gave Philip a, bit of a lift? I uh, almost caught that, but uh, I think you're talking about skis, and uh, of course with that, uh, we have that ability to be able to use the skis to get out and around. And, uh, you know, it's definitely an art just jumping on the back of a sled and actually having that agility and jumping up. It saves every second, and then they get to go all the way around. Felipe's been utilizing the ski more than anybody that I've noticed. Uh, he just did it earlier in this uh, heat. He, he actually got spun out, got all the way up the top, ended up just riding a wave just to get back into position. But it saves a little energy. You can get some breath, suck in some oxygen, um, rather than the paddling. And, and, you know, when you're utilizing a lot of that energy, it, it plays a role, you know, and it's a little bit of a rest. You're able to sit on the back of the ski. So uh, just, uh, you know, I think it's um, something that some guys use a lot. 
and uh, some guys don't. Um, you know, in this heat, again, you know, there's strategies, right? There's that quick start, and you just build, 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 build really quickly, and then there's that one. As soon as that kind of happens, as soon as someone jumps on that, the other guy has to kind of sit and wait, right? And it can it, it changes depending on uh, how it works out for him. Right now, Felipe is just catching anything that moves, and uh, you know, the fact that he surfs those waves so good. Uh, that nose pick layback was on a wave that was basically two feet, and uh, he made another score and manufactured a score out of it. And he can do that. Uh, Julian's going to need a little bit bigger waves. Right now, he's got priority. He's waiting and uh, set on the way. Thank you, Peter Mel. As we see, Julian Wilson let this one go. Toledo wants it. He'll get a big rip off the roof. Going for the grab rail reverse. Late hit. He's upside down and doesn't pull off the major maneuver that we got to witness just the other day. Uh, amazing to see Wilson decide that he didn't want that wave. He's looking for a certain type of wave. He's left 15 minutes off the clock and all the attention's on Toledo. <laughs> well, what, you know, when does that point come in the heat where you've got to start surfing? You know, uh, that was a pretty good wave that uh, Julian could have got a good score on it and got himself, you know, get his feet in the wax, get that first score under your belt for the finals. Uh, he's going to have to wait at least another few minutes before the next set comes through that pressure starting to build 19 minutes and 50 remaining he's gonna it's gonna get down to a point where he's gonna have to rely on two waves he's gonna make sure and he's got to make sure that he he connects with both of those waves and puts down some big scores let's have a look at Julian as he just goes straight over he kind of had a little look but just let it go obviously you said Joe looking for a certain kind of wave have a look at what he's trying here that, <laughs> that's that's a, I don't even know what you call that thing. That's a, that's a little bit different to the one where you where you drive the nose into the face of the wave. It was almost like a barrel roll, rail grab, flip thing. I don't that's know. Right. We should write that down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like grab rail, underwater reverse. I think Felipe has that a couple different versions of it where you can go above the lip and sometimes in a closeout, he'll completely disappear and pop out the other end. This kid's that good, representing Uba Tuba, the first to qualify from that beach Wiggly Dantes from the same zone. Here comes Julian now, opening up the final. Blow tail off the top, he will reverse it. Comes into the next section, tail high, nose pick attempt, and Wilson goes down. After waiting a long time for his start, he ends up incomplete on his second move, and he's still gonna be in a combination spot, Potts. Yeah, I think maybe going a little bit too hard on that second maneuver. You can tell Julian, looking back at that wave, saying to himself, you know what, I could have pulled back and, and posted a really good score. I like the fact these kids are going for it. I mean, this is just a whole different look, isn't it? As soon as all those big guns got knocked out, it was uh, exciting heats to watch. The kids are going for it. You know, just a free surf with a jersey on, pretty much. A different approach to, say, the Mick Fannings or the Kelly Slaters. Have a look at this first turn here. Blows the tail out, just spins it. You can see he moves his feet further up the board, and right there, almost pulling that off, sliding sideways. This is uh, the first turn right here. You can see how that back foot comes off the board. I mean, how's the agility? All that weight is over the front foot. He's keeping those fins free. Now he reconnects the fins, and that gives him his direction back going down the line. He moves his foot back on the pad, and then blows the tail out yet again. Look at that front foot sliding all the way forward, making sure he connects with the wave, but then just grabs the, that rail, just grabs a little bit too much. He needed to have that board a little flatter so it skidded across the face of the wave instead of gripping right there. So Julian Wilson let one get away right there. Felipe Toledo dodged a bullet on that one. That was looking like a big score, Joe. You can see how crucial this quick start's been for Toledo to start off with the lead, holding position on Julian and getting the 8.0. Got a 6.0 under priority. And Julian starts with a 3.7. 17 minutes for Wilson to recover. We remember what happened at Pipe Pots when it came down to that final five minutes of that big bash. There was Medina and Wilson splitting peaks. Wilson's key score came at the back door section with just a couple of minutes remaining. Yeah, and uh, I'll tell you what, it's, you know, these guys are, are good. They know exactly where they stand. They know exactly what they can do in a certain period of time. Um, they've obviously been studying the lineup. They've been here since, uh, you know, early this morning and they know there's X amount of waves coming through in a heat. But uh, there is that unknown factor with Mother Nature. You know, sometimes the ocean goes flat. Sometimes those waves don't come through and you're left looking for a score. So 
you know, the, in that case for, for Julian Wilson, he kind of let one go there. That could have he could have stopped that second turn, maybe pulled back just a little bit, and posted a good score. That would have been with that opening turn, he could have at least gone into the eight point range, and then needed sort of you know a five or whatever to, to get in you know into that first place. Well, now Wilson down to 16 minutes to recover. The last time an Australian won this event was back in 2012 with Tosh, Tosh Burrow taking this one out over Adriano de Souza, Australia versus Brazil, one of the classic rivalries in pro surfing. Toledo still leading this one with his eight and his six. We're still plenty of time on the clock for this Quicksilver Pro Final, and Wilson trying to create a moment for himself to turn this thing around. How much does a win mean for Australia? We'll find out in just a moment as we uh, see a little set puffing up out the back. We'll continue with this final right after this. Welcome back to finals time here at the Quicksilver Pro at Snapper Rocks. Felipe Toledo starting off strong with an eight-point ride, backed it up with a six and has the lead over the Australian Julian Wilson in this all-time final. We've got this new youth brigade coming on tour and now they're finally making big finals and they both have a chance to win this event for the very first time. You can see a maxed out crowd here on the beach at Snapper Rocks and they are going crazy during the break. We had both of them get a solid right-hander. Felipe Toledo was able to throw a searing carve into the pocket, not just once, twice, and now a third hook. He was extending the slide in front of the fans, jammed it vert, and started thinking about closing it out, but he dug a rail and went down when he thought he could do no wrong. Also, Wilson, before this wave, was able to get back in this heat. Got a big first turn off the top. Nice round cutback. Beautiful start for Julian. Got a little slowed up with the off speed section, but now he's gonna make up for it on the inside. Winds up off the bottom, tail high reverse, something he's been pulling off a few times on finals day. Wilson's biggest answer back so far in this final. Yeah, that's he's got that just on lock. You can see that front foot. The technique that he's got, that back foot stayed well and truly on the pad up until the point of landing which is when he slid it forward just to make sure those fins disengaged and gave him that little ability to be able to spin the board around. So Julian Wilson back in the heat, Philippe Toledo, let one slide there. He was on his way to a massive score. I think it's still gonna be very substantial. I think it's gonna better his 6.0 um, and uh, Julian's still gonna be looking for a score, Joe. We can see how patient he was as the judges call for the replay of Julian's best wave in the final. He can count on his air game for big finishes, it seems, every single heat on finals day. He had to stretch out that little flat part, Potts, but he threw down another big rotation into the flats. Tail high form, nose picking his way out of it. Yep. We'll see how that compares to the eight point ride at Toledo. Yeah, uh, just that middle part of the wave that let him down, right? He kind of got slowed up a little bit, kind of caught a bit of a rail, but then recovered pretty good to, to finish off dynamically. And, Maybe the judges might forget about that mid part of the wave, but you know, obviously watching the replay, there's nowhere to hide uh, in a heat. You have so many different camera angles. We've got this thing completely covered from left, right, and center. So uh, it's it's hard to fake it. It's hard to you know really not sort of complete a maneuver. You've got to ride out of it, which he did. There was just that in between part that kind of let him down just a little bit. So now 11:30 remaining on the clock. Big numbers dropping in. The biggest exchange of the contest was written during the break. Wilson gets a 9.10 on his answer back. Still second. Meanwhile, Toledo drops a 9.6. Even with the fall, extends his lead to a 17.6 combined total in the lead. Wow. And that was with a wipeout, 9.6 with a fall off. We saw Michelle Berez do that at Margaret River last year, Joe, where he just completely destroyed the wave, but came unglued at the end. That, you know, I love the fact the judges are rewarding that kind of surfing. You know, he blew that wave to pieces um, and unfortunately fell at the end, but it's, you know, that go for it attitude that the judges are liking at the moment. I think it's encouraging, you know, surfers to go for it. Hey, look, if you light the wave up all the way down and make a mistake at the end, we're still gonna give you a good score. So it's encouraging exciting surfing. Toledo still holding his lead as he's watching Wilson paddle into this wave. Felipe with priority will hold off Julian and try to make him pay for it. Tail high rotation, he'll throw that one away. Pri priority right back to Julian with 10.30 to go. Wow. 
incredible heat right now. 10 minutes and 15 seconds remaining. More waves approaching. Looks like a good set. Julian Wilson's going to paddle over this first one and, and be greeted by what looks to me like a pretty good wave. Is he going to take it? Ju Julian having a look at this one, Joe. Have a look at this wave. And now Julian Wilson will glide in. He needs an 8.51. Comes off the bottom. Foam climb start, and he's going to start slowing down his pace. Didn't like the way that one felt, so he'll kick out. But 9.50 on the clock. Toledo's looking a little bit closer to his first championship tour win here at the Quicksilver Pro with a great start and his best score coming in at that 9.6 range, Potts. Yeah, you know what, though? Julian pulled a rabbit out of the hat against uh, Miguel Poupeau in semifinal action and uh, posted a big score right at the end. Looks like he's going to have to do exactly the same thing. 8.51 is what's required from Julian Wilson. He knows exactly what he's got to do. 9.10 on that wave before. Something very similar to, to close this heat. Well, we have Peter Mel in the lineup, Pete. We had a 9.6 for Toledo. Wilson got a 9.10. How'd the exchange look from the water? Yeah, hey guys, sorry about that. I, uh, you know, I, I just got to take a consideration. That wave of Felipe's, I mean, two different types of wave, both nine point rides, but I'll tell you what, Felipe seared those three turns right here. One of the most hardest rail cars I've seen in a long time. He put everything, all 150 pounds of him into those searing turns. And it, it proved, it showed, man. I mean, you, you know, Potts. I mean, if you look at look on the big screen, he laid into that thing like no other. You talked about it, about his boards being these nice, simple kind of designs that Ross was actually making mention of it. His boards aren't anything oh. special. They're really nice and clean, and that's why his 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 rail turns are so much better than they've ever been. And plus, his air game's second to none. Great read, Pete, yeah. from the channel, and then transition to Julian's wave. What did you take out of that one? Unfortunately, with Julian's wave, he had that dead spot. Potts made mention to it, and it really wasn't it didn't have the same quality. But of course, when you look inside and you see exactly as we see behind me here. Julian's going to give it his all, of course, right? Look at how laid over his bottom turns are. There's that whip and spin. So stylish. Such a great approach. Gosh, this is fun stuff. This is the best heat in the house. <laughs> you definitely have it, Pete. Thanks so much for that insight. It's a new school matchup with Julian versus Toledo. We've seen a couple of lulls. We had Wilson wait over 15 minutes for his start, but he knew that we still have plenty of swell out there for this big clash in the final. Toledo leading, Wilson needs an 8.51 with more waves on the way. Toledo in position, and he's gonna glide in, setting his pace for a first turn, blows the tail, pulls it back around quickly, climbs over the next section, goes off the bottom, tail high reverse. Toledo is on fire. He'll wrap it back into the pocket. Making no mistakes, he's into the inside wedge, the cleanest roundhouse wrap we've seen on the inside corner, and Toledo wow, Joe. is going to another level in front of our eye spots. Oh my, we always, uh, we're always asking the question, has he got anything left in the tank? Well, I'll tell you what, he posted a 9.60. Is that better? That was a perfect air rotation, landed clean, came straight out of it into the next turn. 9.6 was that big three three big radical turns as uh, he has a quick look over the scoreboard the big screen on the beach he's waiting for that replay he wants to see what he did an 8.0 is what he try he's trying to improve on and extend his lead over Julian Wilson I think he's done that easily Joe well Pete you saw that one from the water once again he had such an easy glide in what was the best part of the wave for you that wave kept oh. on giving what do you think it was? <laughs> that was that air. Oh my gosh. I, you, we talk about next level, going next level. He is feeding. He's got himself pumped into this crowd and he is just unbelievable how easily he pulled this air off. And look, big snap right behind it. Another one up and over. But then this is unbelievable. Just out into the flats. He just watched it. He's got a big smile. All I see is teeth on his face right now. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Get a camera on that guy. I mean, just unbelievable. How can you not go? Is this a 10? What do you think, Potts? Well, I think it's up there with his 9.60, two different approaches, Pete. But what he's doing is he's showing the judges everything in his bag of tricks. Here's that angle I was talking about. Look at this. Watch. Oh. oh. Just in the rotation, in the crease, like unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. We see that nose pick rotation. There's not a whole guy, lot of guys on the top 34 that can do that nose pick, even coming out of a major carve. Pete, you're saying his carves are looking like the best carves you've seen in this event. He's adding that air game. 
proving that he's unbeatable on snapper rocks conditions like this. Unbelievable. Uh, I think he's uh, he's proved to the world right now that uh, he's on the, the road to a world title. A 9.6, he's backed it up with a 9.17. 18.772 wave total. Julian Wilson needs a 9.67. Now, don't count Julian Wilson out. I mean, the kid's got a bag of tricks as good as anyone. He's got just under five minutes remaining. Julian Wilson's going to have to let it all hang out right now. He's got to wait for one big bomb and just absolutely blow up. He's got the game to do it, and uh, now's the time. Well, one of the most exciting battles we've seen in Quicksilver Pro history, led by Felipe Toledo from Ubatuba in Sao Paulo, Brazil. He's got a great surfing family, former competitor for a father who's on hand, whistling every time he sees the horizon jump. And he's been flawless in decision-making, controlled the start with an eight-point ride, and that score's long gone. We're into the nines now to clinch a title, a 9.6 and a 9.17. Wilson has a 9.10, so he can get a 9.67 to turn it. He's had 10s in his career. He can do the craziest errors. He did that crazy alley-oop against Jordy Smith of the Mr. Price Pro to victory. Little different situation with conditions like this. Coming down to one major turn on a point break, it might be really hard to get that 10, Potts. Not impossible, though, Joe. Um, you know, the, the ability these kids have got, I mean, the, the, you know, the moves they're doing, you know, the position on the waves, they're doing them. I mean, anything's possible these days. You know, our sport is growing at such a fast rate. These guys are, are doing stuff that amazes us. I mean, a couple of years ago, we wouldn't dream of seeing a final like this. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's just unbelievable. Both kids just going hammer and tong. Julian Wilson with a 9.10. So still looking for a 9.67, Joe. And what an amazing crowd we had on hand for the opening event of the season. We have a lot of Australians, but we do have so many Brazilians. We had a lot of Brazilians last year, but I think they tripled, maybe quadrupled in size since they have a world champion in Medina. And Felipe wants to keep that yellow jersey in Brazil's hands. So far, so good. With three minutes on the clock, Wilson, under pressure, needs to turn this around with almost a perfect score. That's kind of the scenario you dream of having in a final. We got the extension to wait for the swell to come through. You have two of the best all-stars on tour going blow for blow and not holding anything back. Yep, it's, uh, this is what we came to see. This is why we got the extension, ladies and gentlemen. This is why we've seen some incredible surfing. These guys have been greeted this morning with great waves and we went on hold for uh, a couple of hours, which was such a good move. Let that tide go back out. We've seen flawless conditions all day. Now, keeping in mind, hypothetical situation right now, Philippe Toledo wins this. He's in the yellow jersey, number one in the world. You've got Julian Wilson, number two. You've got two other Brazilians, equal third in the world, um, Adriana de Souza and Miguel Pupo. So we're talking about some serious domination here at Snapper Rocks. That Brazilian storm is real. <laughs> when we started talking about it a few years back, it was a lowers event where they dominated the final series. Toledo is proud to be a part of that, proud to celebrate for Medina at Pipeline, even though he went down to him in that contest. He's quick to say he wanted to be the next guy. He's the youngest surfer on the top 34, and he's impressed us throughout even challenging rounds that we had in round two with a reverse rip. He ironed it out beautifully and eliminated some of the top names to win this event. We're down to a minute 40 pots. You know, Joe, I remember last year when we were standing here the day before the contest, and he, and he rode that one wave that we watched, and we were like, wow, you know, this kid's going to do it. He didn't, but now he is. I mean, he's brought that surfing into his competitive game. He's looking sharp. He's looking focused. He wants the world title. 18 years of age, this kid is. Remember that. Uh, he's got a long way to go. So Felipe pacing himself out the back. A minute 20 to go. Wilson needs a 9.67. It's coming close to decision time. Toledo without priority will grab this wave. Comes off the bottom. Layback hammer. Deep off the bottom again. He floats it. Coming around the corner. Driving through a huge carbon tail release. He pulls it off. Straight up. Verda ditches the fins. Toledo. Blows the tail into reverse. <laughs> Can we give that a perfect 10 pots? What more do you want to see from him? Wow. <laughs> Go, Philippe. That's what his dad just said uh, right there. That, that one turn was um, not a turn from an 18-year-old. Come on. That's, that's a turn we expect from a man. This is uh, Philippe Toledo coming of age right here, right now, in front of the world. And he's going to post another nine-plus ride, Joe. Let's have a look at it. Julian Wilson let this one go. 
opening turn like we've seen. Dynamic. He carries so much speed. Look at this right there. Oh my goodness. Tweaks it right at the end and comes out of that straight into another turn. Seamless, fast, radical surfing from Philippe Toledo. Another nine point ride. Easy. And one of the raddest claims we've seen, he's blowing his own mind with this performance. Happy now with now nine waves to his name. We're seeing first Whoa. signs of a score coming from the panel for Felipe Toledo. Whoa. We're into the countdown. Felipe Toledo is the Quicksilver Pro champ and looks like he could finish with the best number in the sport as we wait for one more to lock in. Come on. Wow. The family well, he's Toledo won it. celebrating and now just waiting to see how high that last number will come. Remember, Potts, it was without priority. There it is. A 10-point ride for the young Brazilian, Felipe Toledo. A perfect 10 to kick the, to finish off. Uh, I mean, he already had the hit one. Decided to put the cherry on the top, Joe. A huge way to finish. A memorable moment finishing with a 10. And he wants to let the crowd know that he is the new world number one. Eliminating Julian Wilson on his home court. His first final ever and his first CT win to start off the season. Wow. He's screaming. We got Pete Mel already on the scene. Oh yeah, of course, you gotta get the kid. Hey, by the way, you just got a perfect 10 and won the Quicksilver Pro and you're leading the WSL ratings for 2015. Soak it in, my friend. Man, this is the best feeling in the world. I'm so, I don't know, I'm so happy. I know I've been training so hard the last few months. Just God and my family knows how, how hard I'm training for that and yeah, all the all the training pay off. So I'm I'm so so stoked and I'm really happy and really confident too. I mean, you got to thank some uh, some people. Who are they? Yeah, first of all, God, He just helped me the whole event. You know, I'm figuring out boards in my mind too. God is the the most beautiful person in the world, and uh, of course, my family always by my side, always supporting me, and my friends in Brazil, Batuba. Valeu, galera, pro Jack é nós também. Look at that crowd. They're loving you, my friend. Go join the moment. Back up to you guys. <laughs> wow. What a way to finish the day, Joe. Uh, finish off with one of the best rides of uh, the whole event. A perfect 10. A dream way to finish. Remember, he got that 10 under priority. There's some moments in athlete's career where everything just starts coming together for him. He was making no mistakes. Every transition was perfect. Big blow tail turns. He showed us everything. Even in early rounds when we thought, is he going to have anything left for the next day? And he brought us more. Finishing high in the final with a 10 and a 9.6 ride. The best combined total of the year. Well, he's throwing, he's throwing nine point rides away in the finals. You know, we're always we're asking the question, has he got anything left in the tank? You know, when you surf like he has, eventually you're going to run out of gas. He just kept getting better and better, Joe, and posted his best at the end, right at the end for the finals. Brazil is able to hold on to the Quicksilver Pro title for the second consecutive year. And Toledo enjoying the moment with some of his best friends. Making it official, the 2015 Quiz Silver Pro champion and now the new number one in the world. Jadson Andre, it's his birthday. He's the first on the scene, Potts. Yeah. I'll tell you what, it's uh, crazy scenes down here. Kind of reminiscent to, it's kind of like a mini pipeline sort of deal when Medina won the world title.
So Felipe Toledo celebrating with his family, an emotional moment. A big one for Toledo's career, accomplishing his first final, his first win. And now he'll be number one in the world, heading down to Bells Beach in just his third season, battling with the top 34. Yeah, amazing stuff. I mean, to win your first ever final, uh, to make your first ever final and then go on to win it, uh, and, and take down the guys he did along the way. You know, this is this is the best of the best right here. This is, I mean, these are the best surfers on the planet in all kinds of conditions. And uh, Felipe Toledo comes out on top here at Snapper Rocks. Salida, uh, just first. amazing. Take it away, Rosie. Felipe Toledo, absolutely incredible, on the beach, hugging your dad, hugging all the people that know how hard you've worked for this. Your first final, you've won it. Not only have you won it, you've finished it off with a 10. Just that emotion, just that outpour, just uh, give us your first thoughts on your first WCT victory. Oh uh, yeah, of course. Only God and my family knows how how hard I, I battle for this, how hard I train for all these things happen in the last few months. And uh, I know the whole training paid off and I'm so, so happy. I just want to thank God for sure. He just helped me, the Holy Fan. And he knows like what what I'm doing to, to, to win the world title. So yeah, of course, my family, my dad always supporting me and thank you. A huge congratulations to Philip Toledo. He just took out the Quicksilver Pro 2015. Where stay with us. We're going to go to a quick break and we'll be back for the podium action. Don't go anywhere. Do you like that? Well, if so, subscribe over there and then watch more videos over there. And then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now.